recording? Yep. Hello, party people, and welcome to Los Angeles, California. I'm out in LA uh, for a restaurant opening. There's a restaurant that I've been really excited for when it opened up, Somni, in LA. Uh, but I'm here at the Petite Hermitage Hotel. Charming, super little charming hotel in West Hollywood. Has this really cute little rooftop deck. Uh, that's just charming as all hell. Nice little rooftop pool. Feels like a little isolated, isolated spot in the middle of nowhere. So let's go through your top voted questions. The top voted question from my tea got cold asks, when was the last time that you did something interesting with extended events? Really at the end of the day, extended events is just about recording stuff happening in SQL servers. I, I don't know that it's really interesting to me as much as it is just, it's kind of like a profiler trace. It's just you're recording stuff that happens. Um, the, the thing that I do with it the most often is track compiles, uh, queries that are frequently compiling over and over because somebody stuck uh, option recompile in there. Um, and there are plenty of other reasons why stuff will recompile too, like uh, temp table modifications, um, uh, stats changing, but that I'd say is the thing that I use it most often for. I don't know that it's really interesting, but there you go. Next up, Joseph says, our app slows down under heavy load, but task manager shows no high, or, no high CPU or memory. I suspect network issues or heavy disk reads. Why? That's kind of weird. How can I identify the root cause? Which first responder kit stored procedure should I use first? Hmm. If only there was a class on the first responder kit called how I use the first responder kit. And I know what you're thinking, this is a sales pitch. No, this is free. It's free. Just go to brentozar.com, click training up at the top. There's a free, it's free. It's free. Go watch the class, it's free. I show you how to use it, it's free. I give you the scripts, I give you the training. You just got, at some point you gotta watch. You gotta do the thing. Uh, Joseph has another question. He says, when I have a SQL related doubt, should I post it first on the first responder kit Slack first or directly on PollGab? Well, if you're waiting for me, it sounds like you're looking, you're trying to get answers directly from me. It, that's going to be a whole lot slower, right? Because I only do office hours once a week and then it takes some time for the, the stuff to get uploaded. The thing that I would do if I had a SQL related question is I would go to dba.stackexchange.com. On dba.stackexchange.com, it's super lively. There are lots of people on there who will get you closer to your answer quicker. Uh, on the other hand, if you're a Reddit person, I happen to love Reddit, uh, there's a very active SQL Server Reddit, uh, slash r slash SQL Server. So check those out when you're just doing general SQL questions. Those are the places I would go first to get the fastest answers. Depender asks, what is your opinion of the Git uh, support added to SSMS 21? I, I, you know what, I haven't used it yet and I'm super excited. My schedule was a little weird when it dropped, <coughs> when it came out. Um, I happened to be at the PASS Summit. Um, it was during our Black Friday sale. I had a whole lot of work to do around the Black Friday sale. And then uh, just in like two days, three days, I fly to China and Japan for a month. So I'm gonna be mostly disconnected. Because of that, I'm not gonna have a lot of time to get into it uh, until January. Come January, I expect to be recording tutorials. I'll do it just totally for free, just out on the YouTube channel. Uh, and at that point, I'll be better equipped to answer your question. I'm really excited for it uh, because, of course, I use GitHub continuously for the first responder kit releases, uh, for even for my own training material, I use GitHub as a method of source control. Uh, so I'm super excited. I just don't have an opinion on it yet. Even if it's bad, I think I'm still going to be pretty excited about it because it beats trying to jump back and forth uh, between SSMS and GitHub desktop. desktop. Uh, Jerry asks, what is your favorite query editor for Postgres? How does it compare with SSMS? Um, when I started building Postgres training classes, uh, it was imperative that I use a free tool. I only wanted to use a free tool because I wanted my audience to be able to uh, be as wide as possible, like college students or people who are just getting started. Um, so I only played around with free tools. I thought PG Admin was pretty terrible. Uh, I'm currently using dBeaver. 
I don't think it's great either. It's pretty buggy. Uh, so I, I don't really have a favorite that I like just yet. Azure Data Studio, same thing, extremely buggy. Um, so I, I have high hopes, but uh, Richie raves about data grip. The problem is just that data grip was relatively expensive, and I know a lot of developers have a problem paying for tooling, uh, especially if I'm going to make the audience for the training as wide as possible, that it didn't make sense to use paid stuff. Venkat asks, once SQL Server is out of support, but it's still used, is there any incentive to pay for licensing? Venkat, I don't think you understand. Once it's out of support, you can't pay for licensing. Microsoft won't sell it to you. Like if you try to go to Microsoft right now and buy SQL Server 2008 licensing, it is not an option. That is not an option in the year 2024. Um, what you m might be thinking of is ongoing support, uh, in which case you can't buy that either. Once it's out of support, you can't buy support. That's, that's how that works. Uh, next up, DA5FX says, Hi Brent, I was recently reviewing several SQL servers that have non-critical dev and test databases on AWS network file share servers. Uh, what's your opinion? Um, I have no opinion. Uh, dev and test servers, I don't really care what you do with them. That's cool. If it works for you, that's cool. Uh, the, I get, the, the thing I would ask is why not use local storage? Uh, I, I guess, no, I, I, don't, I don't really have an opinion. I have lots of opinions, but I don't think any of them really matter. For dev and test, who really cares? Next up. TBA says, you recently talked about what a bad idea it was to have link servers pointing to themselves. Is the memory used by a link server query part of the buffer pool? Yes. Uh, I'm trying to prove with metrics to a customer what a bad idea it is. Um, what a bad idea it is. Yeah, memory would be the, if you wanted to go down that route, that's the place that I would go is buffer pool. But the, um, when you're saying, I'm going to prove to the customer what a bad idea it is, let's, let's start with the question that I always ask. What's the problem that you're trying to solve? Because you specifically said customer, and, and here's the deal. Customers want to pay you for the fastest route across the finish line. Sometimes as a consultant, it feels, it can feel good to say, well, you need to do everything over. Everything's wrong. But the thing is, is the customer's not going to change everything. What you want to focus on is what's their biggest pain point uh, that when you solve it, it's going to immediately make performance better. Go focus on that first rather than telling them. Give them the easiest solutions rather than the hardest ones. Uh, next up, Joseph asks, you often say not to RDP into the SQL Server machine. What's the best alternative? So anything that you would remote desktop into, stop and say, can I run that locally on my own machine? Whether it's management server, uh, cluster manager, computer manager, event viewer, odds are anything that you wanted to remote desktop in for is available on your own server if you work just a little bit harder. For example, let's say you needed to go into event viewer, go into event viewer on your machine right click on the computer name where it says like local computer and ch uh, choose connect to and you can point to another server. Uh, the only times where you should really be remote desktoping in is when it's an emergency and you can't access the system from the outside. Like let's say for some reason you can't connect via event viewer, then it would make sense to remote desktop in to see if you were having some kind of catastrophic memory leak, for example, that required rebooting the OS. Uh, Juan Pablo Gallardo says, I'm usually listening to your videos using a headphone while I'm doing something else. I've heard so many things now that I need to go back and I have no clue where to search. Please, could there be just a page with a transcript and a video reference that we can search? Sure, you can make one. Oh, you were asking me to make it for you. Oh, you were saying, Brent, it's not enough that you give away free videos to the community. It's not enough that you don't put them behind a paywall. It's not enough that you do all this stuff on your own time at no charge. Uh, I also want you to write down the contents of the videos and post them publicly. 
one, you're number one in my book, but this is not the finger I want to use. If there's something that you want like that, use a YouTube transcribe. Go Google, there are a ton of YouTube transcribing and, and uh, searching tools that you can use for free. Go do that. Go search through YouTube videos for the keywords that you want, but there's a limit as to how much I'm gonna do for you for free. I am not wiping your butthole, Juan. You're gonna have to wipe your own butthole. Things I never thought I'd say on a webcast. Uh, Bandu asks, will we see office hours from scenic China in the near future? Yes, uh, I am bringing this exact camera along with me uh, through China and uh, Tokyo and Osaka and Kyoto uh, all during December. And uh, Eve is already over there and there's, the pictures are just beautiful. It's already winter over there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, well, she's in China, in Zhengzhou, uh, so I'll be over there. Um, I fly into Taipei and then uh, into Zhengzhou. Uh, my first time there, so it's like for Americans, uh, whenever we haven't heard of a Chinese city, we kind of assume that it's small, but uh, Zhengzhou, for example, is 13 million people. Uh, so it's, it's quite large, and I kind of think of it as like the Chicago of China because it's in the middle of the country and it's a little more uh, historic and uh, industrial, so it's kind of cool. And then uh, one more, we'll do Autofile Dab asks, uh, I'm experiencing performance issues on a SQL instance with way too many indexes, unused indexes, bad database design, bad query design. How do you handle customers who insist that the instance needs to be tuned but won't change the database design or queries? That's a great question and I have a slide deck for that exact thing. And the slide deck says I have three dials that I can turn with SQL Server. I have a query dial where I can change the queries, tune the queries, rewrite them, cache them in the front end, for example. I have the table and index design dial where I can change the indexes, put in column store, change the structure of the tables, put in indexed views, and so forth. And then finally, I have hardware. I can throw more hardware and licensing at it. But those are the only three dials that I have. I can change the queries change the tables and indexes, or throw more hardware at it. That's all the dials I got. If you know of another dial, I'd love to hear about it. Sometimes people will say, well, you could change to RCSI, for example. Right, but you may have to change the queries for that. And at the very least, you gotta test the queries for that. To, when I showed the customers, these are the only three dials that we have, which one would you like me to tune, turn? If they say you can't change the queries and you can't change the indexes, no problem. We're going to design bigger hardware together. We're going to go design bigger hardware, uh, caching layers, uh, uh, read-only replicas, things like that. It's going to be expensive, but that's if you want me to do it, that's what I can do. And that's it. And I truly take the emotion out of it. It doesn't matter what they choose. I truly don't care which one they choose. Uh, they can choose anything that they want. I just get to implement whichever one they choose. You'll find that suddenly when you show those three dials and, and they go, well, isn't there something else? No, I, but you, if you know of anything else, I'd love to hear it. Then it starts to change the discussion and suddenly they come back to the query and index design dials and say, you know what, we can do something about this after all. All right, well, that is a good slew of questions for the morning. I am now off to, first I'm gonna go grab breakfast here. It's right on the other side of this rooftop deck. And then uh, uh, probably going to the Broad, I believe it is. It's a modern art museum here in LA that I've never seen uh, that has some really cool exhibits. Looking forward to, pretty short trip here through LA. It was really just in here for the restaurant opening that happens uh, tonight. Um, but golly, absolutely gorgeous weather. I kind of feel guilty uh, going to uh, an art museum uh, when it's this nice outside. Um, it's like 70 degrees high today, 76. No, 76, okay, I don't feel guilty because it's gonna be kind of hot out. I say hot out, but you know what I mean. Uh, I was already at Malibu yesterday driving up and down the Pacific Coast Highway. Just love LA, it's phenomenal. So thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you all learned something and I will see you all at the next office hours. Adios.